This is chapter 6.1, exercises 41 through 48 and 51, 52. This section, 6.1, our pre-calculus book, has to do with real-world applications of vectors, specifically navigation, forces, in one case, uh, initial trajectory. Problem 41, navigation. An airplane is flying on a bearing of 335 degrees at 530 miles per hour, find the component form of the velocity of the airplane. One thing in navigation, there's kind of a, a standard called the azimuth standard. And the azimuth standard for navigation has to do with zero degrees being true north. And then the angles measured in a clockwise manner back to 360 degrees. And consequently, to the east would be a 90 degree bearing. Due south would be a 180 degree bearing. And due west would be a 270 degree bearing, and so on. And so that's the standard that, that our book and other books use for that. But what I want to do instead of that is really take our prior standard with the standard position angles and I will show you what that is. What that is, instead of zero degrees being at the top and rotating clockwise, we're going to take a standard position angle here, zero degrees at the right, and rotate rather counterclockwise such that 90 degrees is going to be up here at the top, 180 degrees, or pi radians will be here at the left side, and at the bottom will be 270 degrees, and also our zero degrees will, will uh, go ahead and stipulate to be east, and 180 degrees west, and then 90 degrees north, and then 270 degrees will be the south. And this is just going to allow for better consistency to what we've been working on so far. And so what we have here is a airplane flying at a bearing of 335 degrees. So if we start right here at the center, and 335 degrees according to the way I've drawn it here is going to be kind of in this, in this direction. So this will be uh, 335 degrees. And it's going to be the vector magnitude is going to be 530 miles per hour. And the things you have to remember for this are really very few, but you have to remember them well. And that is a yeah, little song. Our cosine is x, and our sine is y. So really what we need to do for this is our component form is going to be just like this. We take R, which is our magnitude, 530, times cosine of 335 degrees, comma, 530 times sine 335 degrees. So really that's it. And that's going to be an exact uh, component form. But then in our calculator, if we go to our calculator, make sure that we're in degrees mode, which we are here in the upper right. See we're in degrees. Uh, we go to 530 times cosine 335 degrees and for that we get to hundredth place 480.34 so we put 480.34 comma and then we go get our 
530 times sine Three hundred thirty-five degrees, and we get negative two hundred twenty-three point ninety-nine. And the units well, I'll just put outside here are going to be miles per hour. And if you look at the azimuth reading, like I stated initially, when I drew a little circle at the right, these figures are going to be a little different because 335 degrees would be up here in the azimuth reading. So you'd get a positive, you get a negative, then a positive. But anyway, that's problem 41. Let's go on to the next problem, which is 43. An airplane is flying on a compass heading bearing at 340 degrees at 325 miles per hour. Wind is blowing with a bearing of 320 degrees at 40 miles per hour. So what we're looking like here, as we draw the big circle here, we have A bearing of 340 degrees at 325 miles per hour and this is going to be 340 degrees Now, people have asked me if it's necessary to do a drawing every time. I don't know if, if necessary is the right word, but I think it's certainly helpful. And then we have this other vector, which is our wind vector, which I'll make here in a little purple, and this is going to be uh, 40 miles per hour. I'll just put 40. And that's going to be put here. That's going to be 320. Okay, 320 degrees. And so what we're what we're actually doing with this is we're taking this wind direction vector here that I'm moving and and we put it tip to tail. So our net vector is going to be this one that I'm now I'm now sketching out in red and I hope you can see that we're really having somewhat of a tailwind this vector this purple one is adding to the speed so we should expect to see a greater number than 325 anyway let's go ahead and work that out it's the same thing as we've done before except we add the two pieces together. The first vector for the plane itself is 325 cosine of 340 degrees and to that we add the wind component which is going to be 40 miles per hour times cosine 320 degrees and then we take the the sine version the, the y component which is going to be 325 sine 340 degrees plus 40 sine 320 degrees we're kind of running out of room on the right. But anyway, that's going to be an exact answer. And we go ahead and put this in our calculator, which I'll now do. We'll put 325 times cosine of 340 degrees. And to that, we're going to add 
are 40, which is our wind vector, times the cosine of 320 degrees. And for that we get 336.04. So we go and put in 336.04, comma, then we go put in 325 times sine of 340 degrees, and to that we add our wind component, which is 40 times sine of 320 degrees. And so we get negative 136.87. And this would be in miles per hour. So this is going to be part A. Next, part B, we're looking for magnitude. So magnitude is going to be the square root of the x component, 336.04 squared plus negative 136.87 squared and going to our calculator again part B we get our square root bracket here and we put in 336.04 and we square that and we put in our negative um, let me do something here. What I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to put in this last number calculator. If, we, if I put control ANS and square that on the outside, we're going to get 362.84. So our ground speed, which is our magnitude, Again, 362.84 miles per hour. And so that's our ground speed. And one last thing we have to find is direction. Direction, we're going to find this angle here between the the x-axis here and the black here to the right and the red and to find our to find our direction we're going to take our inverse tangent of our negative I'm going to leave myself a little more room here negative 136.87 over our x component which is 336.04 and this is going to give us a negative number so to that we're going to have to add 360 degrees and if this is a correct calculation, what this is going to give us is an angle somewhere between 320 and 340 degrees. So let's go take this in our calculator. We're going to inverse tangent. And we're going to put this negative... 136.87 and we're going to divide that by 
our x component, which is 336.04. And to that, we're going to add our 360 degrees to adjust for fourth quadrant. And we get uh, 337, 337.84 degrees. So that's going to be our direction. I hope you can see from the sketch that that would be approximately, that would be this angle here that I'm now putting in red. That would be this angle right here, 337.84 degrees. Next on the problem we look at is 45 shooting a basketball. Basketball is shot at a 70 degree angle from the horizontal at an initial speed of 10 meters per second. And we did something like this a while back when we were working on parametric equations. But essentially what you have is this. You have it like a, it's like an XY coordinate plane. And then you have a, a 70 degree angle Okay, this is going to be 70 degrees. And then you have a basketball shot like this. It'll come initially like this, and then we'll, we'll go in this direction, parabolic. So we're looking at the initial velocity. So the initial velocity is going to be simply this. We take our magnitude, which is 10 meters per second, times the cosine of 70 degrees, comma, 10 sine 70 degrees. That's going to be our A. And then to get our exact, uh, our decimalized answer, we're going to put in 10 times cosine of 70 degrees and we get 3.42 to the hundredth place we'll just stay hundredth place here comma and then we go to our calculator again and put in 10 sine 70 degrees we get to the hundredth place 9.40. Okay, so and the units for this are going to be meters per second. And then if we wanted to, we could make a parametric equation of these things. Um, and anyway, that's part A. Part B, writing to learn. Give an interpretation of the horizontal and vertical components of velocity. Well, I'll just say this. The initial, and I'll just abbreviate I and IT, uh, horizontal velocity you can say horizontal speed or speed to the right is 3.42 meters per second. And then we say the vertical, the initial and IT vertical, or instead of vertical, let me just say, I'll just say upward. velocity is 9.40 meters per second. So these are our answers right here.
Okay, next on the problem, 47, moving heavy object. Suppose the box described in exercise 46 is being towed up the incline plane in the figure below. Find the force W needed in order for the component of the force parallel to the incline plane to be 2.5 pounds. And I think for this one, I might just make the drawing a little bigger. Okay, what we're doing is we're taking this force right here that I'm drawing in blue. The vector for this is going to be 2.5 pounds. And what we need to do is find the difference in angle between this W here. What is this angle right here? I'm putting an alpha between this W and this blue vector below. Well, basically, what it's going to be, it's going to be 33 degrees minus the incline of the plane, which is 15 degrees, which will be 18 degrees. So that's what this angle right here is, 18 degrees. So that's going to be the difference or distinction in that W. So for the force in the direction of the blue arrow to be 2.5 pounds, 2.5 pounds, let me write over here, 2.5 pounds is going to be half, it's going to equal W times the cosine of 18 degrees. And then to solve for W, if we divide both sides of this equation by cosine of 18 degrees, we're going to get W equal to, and we go to our calculator, Take 2.5 divided by cosine 18 degrees. And for that, we get 2.629, we'll call it, to the thousandths place. And so for to give our answer in component form, that is going to be going to the left here, we'll get 2.629 cosine of 33 degrees. That's what this angle is here. Comma 2.629 sine 33 degrees. And we go to our calculator, we put in 2.629 cosine 33 degrees, okay, we get 2.205, we'll say. And for the Y component, we put in 2.629 sine 33 degrees, 1.432. And our units for this will be pounds. Why is LB or LBS the abbreviation for pounds? It has to do with Roman Libra for pound. Anyway, an acronym of language. Okay, 48, we're not going to do 48, but combining forces, you kind of got to worry about this. You're combining two forces on opposite sides of the x axis. And the trick is with this 15. Uh, degrees. You can either represent that by going all the way around like this and making that 340 
45 degrees or if you use the 15 degrees you got to make that negative so it's a opposing force so just be careful about 48. 51 navigation a ship is heading due north at 12 miles per hour and so we're going to just assume north is straight up so here's our ship going due north and this is going to be 12 miles per hour the current is flowing southwest at four miles per hour so we'll assume west is over here to the left and so what we have is southwest is going to be exactly halfway between west and south so this angle here is going to be 45 degrees for that to be southwest and what we're doing is we're taking this let me see if I can get that blue one. We're taking this blue one and moving it right up here. And so what we're really looking for is this thing right here that I'm now sketching roughly in red. Okay. We're looking for the magnitude and direction of that red thing that I am now sketching. So what we have for that is a component vector. And what that is going to be is... Now we're going to use the whole standard position thing again where 0 degrees is to the right, 90 degrees is up top, and to the left is 180 degrees, and to the bottom here is, is 270 degrees. And so this halfway in between, I'm going to draw it originally, the blue vector I drew originally, is going to be halfway between 180 and 270 or 225 degrees. So what we have is 12 cosine of 90 degrees. And that's going to be this straight up 12 miles per hour plus 4 cosine 225 degrees. And then we have for the y component, 12 sine uh, 90 degrees plus 4 cosine, no, 4 sine, is it 4 cosine? Plus 4 sine 225 degrees. So that's it right there. And 12 co cosine 90 degrees is 0, so that's going to be 0. 12 sine of 90 degrees, well, sine of 90 degrees is 1. So we can go to our calculator and put in 12 cosine of 90 degrees, which is 0, plus 4 cosine 225 degrees. So we get negative 2.8. 2.8. And it makes sense because this net effect is going to be moving this thing to the left. Now, for the sine thing, we're going to have 12 sine 90 degrees, which is just 12, plus 4 sine 225 degrees. So we get 9.172, we'll say around the thousandths place. And this is going to be in miles per hour. And now it says find the actual bearing and speed. Well, speed is going to be magnitude. Magnitude which is going to be equal to this thing that we've done before. We're going to take this negative 2.828 squared plus 9.172 squared. 
So we go to our calculator again. Put in negative 2.828 and we square that plus we're going to put in the last thing calculated for the sign so I'm going to put control A and S then we square that we get 9.598 miles per hour. Okay, so that's going to be speed. And again, we're talking about at this point the magnitude of this red representation here, this red arrow representation. And direction, what we're going to have is over here in quadrant two. So direction for bearing is going to be equal to inverse tangent have the change in y or the yeah 9.172 over negative 2.828 and to that we're going to have to add 180 degrees to get a standard position for that so going to our calculator we go to our inverse tangent of nine point one seven two divided by negative two point eight two eight and to that we're going to add 180 degrees so we get 107.136 And that will be from standard position. And if we, if we're taking it, if we're trying to take it from this direction to, to the west up to north, we're going to have to have 180 minus 107.136, and that's going to be a direction north of west. So to do that, we're going to calculate 180 minus ANS. So it'll be about 72.864 degrees. And it'll be north of west. And we could use law of cosines also if we wanted to. This, um, this thing here would be a, a difference of, I think, that would be 45. Well, we, we could work it out and you'd have, this would be our angle 45 degrees here. This would be 12, this would be 4. So to work that out, we would say uh, our speed squared would be equal to 4 squared plus 12 squared minus 2 times 4 times 12 times cosine 45 degrees. And we'll just see what that looks like here. You're going to see the same. you see this angle. I mean this this distance right here and you're going to see that 9.598 so we go to menu 31 and we're going to put in speed squared let's say speed 
squared equals 4 squared plus 12 squared minus 2 times 4 times 12 times cosine of 45 degrees and we'll put in comma s and we should get it right here yeah see 9.598 right we had earlier then we could use law of we could use law of sines to find this angle over here so application of law of cosine as well anyway this has been our exercise set 52 is kind of similar to 51 good luck on all these even number problems and as always thanks for viewing Thank mm -hmm. you.